Today I'd like to patch together what I'll call the classical definition of the parabola with the way that we generally view it today as a set of points satisfying some sort of equation. So classically, a parabola is defined to be the set of all points that are equidistant from a fixed point. This point is known as the focus and a fixed line, and this line is known as the directrix. Okay, so, well, our main goal today is to find, like, the equation of almost the most general parabola. We'll point out how it's really not the most general, but just close, but let's see our goal first. So, we'd like to find the equation of the parabola with a focus of rs and a directrix of y equals ax plus b. And observe that that takes into account almost all lines except for vertical lines. So this will make all parabolas except those that are opening exactly to the right or exactly to the left. Those are going to have vertical directrixes. Okay, so let's maybe draw on our picture over here a little bit so we can make some measurements. Okay, so let's say this point up here is our arbitrary point on our parabola. So that's going to be point x, y. And then, well, we've got our distance here. So that's one of the distances we want to be, well, equal to the same thing. And this is to our focus, which is rs. And then next up, we need to measure between this point and the, on the parabola and the line. But there are infinitely many ways to measure that distance, but the choice is to pick the shortest path. But that shortest path will intersect the line at a 90 degree angle. I think that's like a well-known fact. Okay, so it'll intersect right there. Okay, and then, well, let's put the point on the line right here, and let's maybe say it has x coordinate, x naught. But in fact, we know what the y coordinate is because it's on the line y equals ax plus b. So this has y coordinate ax naught plus b. And in fact, what we'll see is that x naught and, well, x naught and y naught, which we've already gotten rid of, is going to depend on x comma y. Because of course, like wherever we move this x, y along the parabola, that's going to create a different line segment that intersects our line at a perpendicular angle. So now what I'd like to do is put a couple of vectors in here. So let's put a vector right here that is parallel to the line, and let's maybe call this vector v. And observe that since the line has a slope of a, for every one unit it travels horizontally, it travels a units vertically. So using standard basis, that's going to be denoted by the vector 1a. And then we've got this other vector, which I'll call w. And what it does is it's uh, parallel to this line which joins our parabola and our line. And well, vectors, if you know the two points, can be calculated just by essentially doing final point minus initial point. So this has coordinates x minus x naught and then y minus ax naught minus b. So that's y minus the y coordinate. And well, let's give this a name w as well. Okay, so now that we've got all of these parts, well, let's start filling some data over here, which is going to be helpful. Okay, so let's find first the distance to the focus. Okay, so that's actually extremely easy to do because we can simply use the distance formula. So we've got our arbitrary point x, y, and we have our focus r, s. So that'll give us the square root of x minus r squared plus y minus s squared. Okay, nice. And now we also need the distance to the directrix. So that is where we need to figure out this point down here. So let's maybe write up here exactly what we need. So what we need 
is for v to be perpendicular to w, but observe that that's equivalent to v dot w being equal to zero. Okay, well, so let's simply calculate v dot w. So that'll give us one comma a dot, let's see, we have our x minus x naught, and then our y minus ax naught minus b. So let's see, that'll give us x minus x naught plus a y minus a x naught, well, the a is squared, I should say, and then minus a b. So we want this to be equal to zero. And observe what we can manipulate here is the x naught. A and B are fixed, those define our line, and X and Y are fixed as well. Those are fixed points along our parabola. Okay, so let's see, moving some things around, what we'll see is that X naught is equal to the following expression. We have AY plus X, and then minus AB all over a squared plus one. And then by plugging in the formula where y naught is equal to ax naught plus b, we'll get the y coordinate as well. And what we get for that is the following. So cutting out some of the details of calculation, we have a squared y and then plus ax plus b also over a squared plus one. Okay, great. And now we're ready to calculate the distance to the directrix. So this is going to be the square root of x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared. Where of course we're using those values for x naught and y naught. Okay, so let's see what this will be. So we'll have a big square root and then we'll have x minus, we have a y plus x minus a b. This is all occurring over a squared plus one. And then we're squaring that whole thing. And then we'll have plus y minus, so we have this a squared y plus a x plus b all over a squared plus one. We're squaring that whole thing as well. But now let's start to manipulate that. So let's bring a one over a squared plus one out of the whole radical. So we'll get to that by, well, getting rid of that denominator that we have and then multiplying a squared plus one into the free x and the free y. So that'll leave us with the following expression. We have a squared x plus a minus a y and then minus x and then plus a b all squared. Okay, nice. So that's from this first bit. And then from this second bit, we'll have plus a squared y plus y minus a squared y minus ax minus b and then the whole thing squared. And then that's all in the radical. Okay, so let's take that expression for our distance to the directrix and start simplifying it. Okay, so here's the expression that we left off with, which was our distance to the director. So I had a bit of a typo before that was a plus a, and I changed it to what it should rightfully be, which is plus x. Now let's start simplifying. Observe that this plus x will cancel with this minus x, so that's a good sign. And then this a squared y will cancel with this minus a squared y. And then also observe that we can factor an a out of this first term. But since it's being squared, we actually factor an a squared out. So that gives us one over a squared plus one. I'm just bringing that down. And then we'll have a squared times. So we'll have y minus ax minus b all squared. And you might say, hey, you changed the signs there. But it's actually okay because all of that's being squared, so a sign change doesn't change anything. So observe taking the a out of the y, well, that just gave, a, gave us a y. Taking an a out of this, that left us with minus ax, and then the same thing over there. And then, well, observe that now we have the same thing over here. We have y minus ax minus b quantity squared. 
But now let's observe that we can bring that large term out of the square root as well. So I'm underlining that in brown. So that'll leave me with, well, you might say the square and the square root will cancel each other, but we'll actually end up with an absolute value. So we'll have the absolute value of y minus ax minus b. And then this is gonna be over a squared plus one times, well, what's left over? The square root of a squared plus one. So it's in fact over the square root of a squared plus one. So that's our distance to our directrix. So let's maybe put that up here and then see if we can manipulate that into something nice. Now we're ready to start piecing things together. So we know the distance from the focus needs to be the same as the distance to the directrix. So we simply set these two expressions equal to each other. But maybe we'd like to get rid of the square roots. So since those are both positive, as they both represent distances, we don't lose anything by squaring them. Okay, so that's going to give us the following. We'll have y minus ax minus b squared over a squared plus 1 equals, equals x minus r squared plus y minus s squared. Okay, so there you have it. That's a fairly general equation of this parabola. Now, I'd like to do a couple of things with this just to do a gut check to make sure this makes sense. So the first thing that I'd like to do is, well, let's say the directrix is the line y equals negative one fourth. So in other words, it's a horizontal line that's been pushed down a little bit. And then let's say that the focus is the point zero one fourth. Then what happens there? Well, notice in this case, a is equal to zero because we don't have any slope on our line. And what we end up with is y plus one quarter squared. That's because the b in our case is this negative one quarter, so the two minus signs cancel, equals x squared plus y minus one quarter squared. And that's because s in our case is a quarter. But now let's observe that something nice happens. When we multiply this term out, we get a y squared and we get a plus 16th. When we multiply this term out, we get a y squared and we get a plus 16th. So those two y squared terms will cancel and all that's left is a y over two here and a minus y over two here. But then moving the y over two from the right hand side to the left hand side, you'll see that we get y equals x squared, which is maybe like our favorite equation for a parabola. Okay, so let's do maybe one more thing before we finish up. Okay, so one little bit of exploration left for our parabola that we found. So what I wanna do now is expand all of this out. Maybe, well, I won't do all of the calculational details, but we'll like hit the high notes. So if you expand this out and move all of the quadratic terms to the left-hand side, by the quadratic terms, I mean all of the terms that have a y squared, an x squared, or an x times y. What we end up with is x squared plus 2 times a times xy plus a squared times y squared. So like I said, that's for moving some things around. And then what do we have on the right-hand side? Well, it's a bit of a mess but it looks something like this. We have 2r times a squared plus one, and then plus 2ab, so all of that's the coefficient of x. And then we've got a similar coefficient for y, so it'll be 2s times a squared plus one minus 2b, so that's our coefficient of y. And then we've also got a constant term too, so that's gonna be a squared plus one, um, times r squared plus s squared, and then plus b squared. But the important thing here is that we've got all of the quadratic terms on one side, and then we have all of the linear terms on the other side. Notice that the highest power of x and y on the right-hand side is 1, and they're not multiplied together. 
And then maybe the most striking thing here is what occurs with this quadratic stuff on the left hand side. Observe that that factors. This in fact factors to x plus a times y squared. And then, well, now we have x plus a times y squared equals, I'm just gonna give these some new names here, collapse all of this stuff together. We have cx plus dy plus e, where I've collapsed all those numbers together. And now that motivates a so-called affine change of variables, which will put all of this into a nice setup. So our change of variables will just be to set new x, which I'll call capital X, equal to x plus ay. And then we'll set new y, which I'll call capital Y, equal to cx plus dy plus e. Now observe that that's also represent representable by multiplying by a matrix and then adding a vector. So in fact, what we have is vector capital X, capital Y is equal to, let's see, matrix 1, A, C, D times little x, little y, plus, let's see, uh, vector 0, E. So that's a nice way to look at it. But also, observe that in these new variables, what we have is the equation capital Y equals capital X squared which is again, our favorite type of parabola. So this type of change of variables, well, it allowed us to change our general parabola to the nicest parabola. And that's a good place to stop.